the century, the black and white ball. Now who should I invite? Babe and Betsy, the Kennedys on mats. The Princess Pignatelli, no, she acted like an ass. Gargle, Fonda, Dietrich, Mike Nichols, Stephen Sondheim, Andy Warhol, Larry Rivers, and that cute man who delivers all my mail to ensure my RSVPs never fail. Except for Mick. And Liz can bring along her big old dick. The princess of this, the Maharani of that, the Duke and Duchess, the Queen. This book contains, as some wit might say, my international list for the guillotine. We assume they'll still be married in the fall. And when Jerry does the boogaloo with Betty, well, that means Robbins will be dancing with McCall. But I'll tell you two names that I've rescinded. They're the folks who go by Lady Bird and Linden. All the staff would turn to Rexon. Oh, it's not because they're Texan. They don't want to let that bag of wind in. No, what really makes the plaza truly nervous is to get the Lyndon Johnson. You must take the Secret Service. And I don't want to let those White House dicks in. My lord, I might as well ask Richard Nixon. And he's not one of 500 of my closest friends. Them, or consign them. Gloria Guinness, Gloria Graham, Gloria Steinem. Which Gloria will I allow to glow? Vanderbilt or DeHaven? Which glow will get to go? For oh, 500 of my closest friends, allies who made the friends and you'll make 5,000 enemies. <laughs> 500 of my closest friends. Now, no peeking. Um, thank you everyone for being here tonight. I'm so honored and humbled to be sharing this evening with you. My name is Amber Mack, for those of you who don't know me. I'm the Founding Artistic Director of Forward Theatre Project. <laughs> Forward's all about discovering, developing, and delivering the new musical to the public. We started off tonight with a song from the Black and White Ball by Stephen Cole and Todd Ellison. George Andrew Wolf, amazing, played the iconic Truman Capote, creating a guest list for the legendary black and white ball of 1966. Coming up, Chicago's own rising star, Ariana Burks, a 15-year-old student at Chicago High School for the Arts, will perform the title song from this musical, taking over for the role of Emma, a teenage girl in Brooklyn determined to be invited to Capote's ball will be Ali J, along with Evan Tyrone Martin playing Emma's admirer, set on making Emma's dreams come true. Wonderful ball, black and white ball. 
you said over time. The heights may be high, but it's worth it to climb. And now that the mountain is here, the black and white walls where the Negro and Caucasian will converge. Where black Let's 
Susie, who's that? Who's that? Only the most influential society columnist since Charlie Knickerbocker. Oh, That's I forgot. What did Susie say? Susie sends Truman's got a list. Susie sends his home in mid-time. Susie sends, if you are in, you'll make an end of mine. She says, true, baby, ask me. The mayor and the captain the press. Then again, he might not. Power's what Truman's got. So according to Susie, Invite's been mailed for the dance. Ball. Right, but reading between the lines, you still have a chance. I still have a chance. Uh, uh, sure, uh, maybe I can help. Mikey, if you can do that, if you can give me an invitation, I would kiss you. That'll do it. <laughs> I'll do what I can to make you see me. If life is a jail, then you can free me. I move the earth. Emma did get to go to the ball, but it didn't go exactly as planned. I found her outside the Plaza Hotel and saw her for the last time. Yes, nothing can ever be clearer. On that point we must always agree. Though we're only two drops in an endless Yes, I know you, and I know you know me. Little True was from another time and place. The instant they met, they knew they were the same. Emma and True, worlds apart, collided at the black and white ball. And that collision changed the world. It is a tragic love story written by Jeffrey London and Arthur Perlman of Hublot and Lucha. 
played by the lovely Brandon Chandler and Lauren Villegas. They are joined by the mirthful Chucho, played by the ever-talented Yondo Lopez. And their sinister boss, played by the smoldering Adam Estes. Now sit back and enjoy the smooth Latin rhythms of Swift as Desire. Telegraph operators! Oh sure, I said, sounds like fun. Some fun. It is fun. It's like dancing with a beautiful girl. And I get stuck with her ugly friend. <laughs> I've been practicing all the, the, the day, and I still don't get it. Da, dee, da, 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 dee, da, 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 da,
Is the day dawning? Is the sky cloudy or blue? Although I assume the flowers are blue, I see nothing, nothing but you. And are the birds singing? I have not one single clue. They whistle their song, but somehow something's wrong. I hear nothing, nothing but you. Is a storm blowing? Blowing! Is the grass up to with the dew? With the dew! Is it chilly or hot? I feel that I'm forgot. I feel nothing. Then you 
had the privilege of getting to know these wonderfully talented writers, uh, not only through these amazing works, but by helping to bring their voices to a Chicago theater community that is really hungry for new and important works. Now, our collective knew that the writer would be at the heart of our organization, because without these creatives who are wearing red roses tonight, uh, none of this would be possible. So we're thrilled to have them here. And won the Outer Critics Circle Award for And the World Goes Round, was nominated for the Outer Critics uh, Award for originating the role of Tanya in Mamma Mia. She has been on Broadway more times than we can count, and it is a real honor to have her here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Mason. part of this is a, a New Works Festival. I mean, it's so exciting. I, I can't believe Chicago hasn't had one up to this point. So it's really great that you all get to um, experience those 29-hour readings like the rest of us. <laughs> and um, this is from a show I wrote called Unfinished Business, but it's actually the music of Brian Lasser. There will be better days, there will be brighter nights, and even better ways to deal with lonely nights. With every broken heart, another chance to start, there will be better days. There will be other springs and even blue skies Cause every new day brings a special new surprise With every tear that falls, another morning crawls There will be better days
here in Chicago yeah. as well. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that occurs and you all get to see it. All right, it is now my pleasure to introduce the third of the musicals that were selected for our uh, inaugural reading series, and we would love to have you come and support these phenomenal projects. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, all right, so next up, Pride and Prejudice, the musical by Lawrence Rush. It brings Jane Austen's beloved novel to the stage. With a lush romantic score, this emotionally charged musical follows the spirited Elizabeth Bennet as she rebels against society's and her mother's wish that she must marry anyone, as long as he is rich. When she crosses paths with the arrogant Mr. Darcy, a battle of wills begins. Ladies and gentlemen, our wonderful cast here, Karen Mason, Larry Adams, Summer Naomi Smart, Rebecca Bradford, Jen Baker, Olivia Renteria, and Jordan Jens, this is Pride and Prejudice the Musical. How can you read at a time like this? The ball is in a week, there is so much to do. Time to prepare, there's not a moment to lose. Each of my girls must look their best. Don't slouch so. Fix up your hair, pick out your lovely shoes. Meekly is bound to be impressed. You must walk like ladies. Smile and curtsy every chance you get. And make sure.
situated at any cost? Does love not matter? Choosing a man for his wealth or connection, selling my soul for a hilltop estate, living a life without love or affection, you may have it if you wish it. silence me on this subject forever. Elizabeth, will you marry me? How could I have said the hurtful words I said? How could I have treated you unkindly? How could I not see the woman I now see? How could I have wronged your life so blindly? You have been my mirror, you have shattered my disguise. You taught me how to open up my eyes. Now you are all I see, all I ever dream. All I ever need is here before me. Single day, I just want. 
not imagine who could love this jaded heart. I couldn't now see. Now I cannot imagine the stars. board of people around my dining room table in December and I kind of told him my idea and I thought maybe one or two might stick with me and see what we could create and all eight of them stuck with me till tonight um, and so 220 submissions later from writers all over the world and I literally mean that um, meaning we got one from Hungary uh, fascinating <laughs> yes um, we were we were inspired just by that reaction from the writing community and then the acting community by asking all these people to come. It's just been simply amazing. All right, everybody, you want to take your seats because it's about time we get started again. What do you say, baby? She says, let's go. Get yourself another glass of wine. Look around. Up and down. Don't look too far down. Cause someone up there's giving me a sign. Take your time and check me out. I was just a simple boy from suburban Illinois. Through a camera lens, I made my great escape. And I photographed my to the place I am today Too cold to think this natural Saying in voice Oh hello But now the night is mine To share with all mankind I'll just thank you all For coming to my dream Who wants a drink? That's not good boys Let's do it again What do you say? Oh, 
the den or in the hall And you point it out to the way you got company Exposure is the story of a young lesbian who finds herself homeless on the streets of Chicago with her intention of ending up in New York City after being thrown out of her family's rural Midwest home. With an encyclopedic knowledge and even physical resemblance of James Dean, she befriends a former Uber star photographer, and together they discover an unlikely but transformative spiritual connection. So please welcome Jessica Marks and the cast of Exposure to sing Strange Music.
the writers of tonight's pieces, most of whom flew in just for this concert, this night would not be pass possible without all of your talents and your hard work. Thank you so much, all of the wonderfully generous donors who helped us get to this evening, and finally you, the audience. Thank you for being here with us, thank you for celebrating with us, and thank you so much for your support. For anyone who knows me, I am truly the happiest while sitting in a darkened theater watching a musical come to life. Musical theater has been in my life since the age of three, as I remember dancing in the aisles as Jane Morgan sang and danced in Maine at the Kennebunk Playhouse in Kennebunk, Maine. Meanwhile, I was dressing as Maine. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> When can I see this next musical, Love and Other Fables, written by John McMahon and Jay Jeffries, complete? Soon, Scott. Oh. But tonight, we get a taste of Aesop and his wonderful stories. Fable. Uh, I just use Mother Nature to explain human nature. <laughs> People come from well-connected families, and others have good looks or wealth or fame. A few find glory in their field, while power is what others wield. But I have only one thing to my name. Yes, I have only one thing to my name. I've got fables, clever fables. They're the only thing I've got that get me by. I may not own my sandals or my tunic, but you won't hear me grumble or complain. It could be worse, at least I'm not a eunuch. I have something much more valuable, my brain. I spin stories, allegories, from my bottomless compendium of lore. A trick of fate left man enslaved me, but my gift of gab will save me from whatever fate the future holds in store. From whatever fate the future holds in store. I populate my tales with foolish animals. A box of frog, a finch, an ass, a flea. I let my stories take their aim in hopes I'll hear someone exclaim, I recognize that stupid ass in me. I recognize that stupid ass. <laughs> How many fables are there? Sorry, what was that? I said, how many fables are there? Why, that's such a good question for you to ask. Okay. Well, uh, there's the miller and the mare and the hunter and the bear and the goose that laid the eggs of solid gold. There's the heron and the clam and the lion and the lamb and the raven who was such an awful scold. There's the marten and the monkey and the elephant and donkey and the kestrel who was nesting in the hickory. There's the leopard and the oxen and the hound that left the fox in and the magpie who was punished for his trickery. There's the viper and the cow and the eagle and the sow and the cuckoo who kept mocking all the eggs. There's the swallow and the wren and the rooster and the hen and the other bugs that couldn't reach the graves. There's the nightingale and beaver and the weasel and the weaver and the one about the ravaging rhinoceros. There's the bramble and the briar and the wolf and sheep's attire. Yes, my repertoire of people is the Lazarus. Did you get all your things? Yes. 
Good. Uh, are you sure no one saw you? What's wrong? There's something wrong. There's nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing's wrong. We've got to hurry. You've got to get on that boat before anyone notices you're gone. Now, listen closely and repeat after me. Steal silently at seven just outside the palace stables and stand beneath the shelter of the closest swaying palm. I'll steal silently at seven just outside the palace stables and stand beneath the shelter of the closest swaying palm. Pretend you're an Assyrian somnambulist and softly sing a soporific song. Pretend I'm an Assyrian somnambulist then softly sing a soporific song. Like this. Good. Now, you'll meet a suntan sailor there who says his name is Sinbad. A scarlet patch is centered on his stupefied left eye. I'll meet a suntan Sinbad there who sports a patch of scarlet that's centered on his stultified right eye. Right? Wrong! If his right eye is even slightly stultified, that's Sisyphus and he's a Spartan spy. <laughs> so Sinbad has a left eye that is stupefied. His grimace hides the dimple on his chin. I'll notice in that's right eye has a soulful, sexy sneer. His grimace and intimidating grin. No, no, his sneering stare is spiteful. His dimple is delightful. Now concentrate, you've got to learn this strategy by heart. I'll scrutinize him closely. He'll stare at me morosely. It's the only way you'll ever have of telling them apart. Then secretly he'll spirit you across the silent desert. A small Etruscan ship is sitting soundly in the bay. And secretly he'll Spirit me across the silent desert. A sturdy stalwart ship is poised to carry me away. Now take this golden coin, see that Egyptian. Nectanabo! Yes, that's his solemn countenance engraved. Nectanabo's Egyptian inscription. He'd look a lot less solemn if he shaved. Show it to the captain of that small Etruscan vessel, and he'll set sail and see you safely reach the Samo shore. I'll show it to the captain of that small Etruscan vessel, then he'll set sail and see I safely reach the before you go, let's recapitulate. You're saving Samos from a savage war. You're better off indulging me, capitulate. Lysina, you must try it one time more. Must I? <laughs> Talents. Well, what made you give it up? I got depressed. 
All that whoa and all that stuff is very poetic, but oh, I can't stand to see an audience cry. You're right. You should be singing and dancing and making people happy. Oh, that's revolutionary. What would you call it? Musical comedy. <laughs> would ever condemn lines poetic, portentous, and grave. It's time we decided to hike up those headlines and give those freaks what they crave. <laughs> Who cares about the Dia and onomatopoeia? rather see a pair of beautiful legs. I know that Liz Estrada would get those fellas hotter. Each time she shows she's got a pair of beautiful legs. If, if, if a Janiya brazenly bears her thighs. Loyal stage door, John expects a glimpse of her legs. Each one of those masterpieces spark countless masterpieces. But what sparks have a breeze to see in beautiful legs? Helen sure was a look for her tootsies happy hold. Left in ruins. Those gals will all be shoo-ins. Revealing rows and rows and rows of beautiful legs. Ah, 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 ah. A play about a Trojan will cause a big explosion. You want to fill the lotion? Give a glamorous Forgive her sins. Who thought she'd bring disaster? Parade dates, those tails on her pins. Next year in summer stock, I don't want to see the Bach guy. Unless they're showing rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of beautiful, glorious, glamorous, fabulous, oh, Thank you, good night everyone.